you're rapping. They, they just think, yeah, I'm going to just live it up because this is it. Once you die, it's all over with. But it's sad that they feel that way because Father Yahweh is going to judge because it says, and after this, after the death, after one dies, after you have come to your appointed time to end this physical life in this world as we see it now, judgment. So the two questions, who are the dead in Messiah who rise first in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16, and then who is present during the last great day? All of those who died before Yeshua's return and were in Messiah at the time of their death. Luke 12, 47 and 48. Can we read that all together? And that servant who knew his master's desires and did not prepare, nor did according to his desire, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who did not know yet did what deserved flogging shall be beaten with few. And everyone to whom much is given from him much shall be demanded, and to whom much has been entrusted, from him much more shall be asked. This is the question, this is the answer that Father Yahweh gave me for our relatives who have gone on, for people who didn't get a chance to come into this word, to come into this walk, didn't get a chance, didn't, had no one come to them and say, do you know that his name is not God, but it's Yahweh? Did you know they translated Jesus' name, that his name wasn't Jesus, but it's Yeshua? They didn't get the opportunity. It wasn't their appointed time for them that to be revealed, that information to be given to them. So this is what I say to you today, that it says here that just as it says to whom much is given, much will be demanded, it's the same thing. In giving less, less is demanded. And that's what this scripture is saying. So Father is going to judge them by how they died and what their covenant was. What was their level of understanding with him? Now, those of us who have come into this walk, let me tell you, the danger of coming into this walk and then not walking it out, we don't want to do that. That's why I tell, and I have family members who say, we want to come and study with you. You sure? Because once this information is revealed and given to you, much will be. He doesn't say might be demanded. It will be demanded of you. Because we are called to be a light to the nations of the world. We are called, no matter how much there's a reason that Father called you into this walk, there's a reason that many of us, we're the only ones in our family that's in this walk. And it's a reason that that has occurred. And it's because that Father Yahweh's seed has been transformed and, and sent out into all the nations. And this is what we're seeing now. We're seeing the sons of Jacob coming forth and coming out of the nations and seeking after what, they, what had been lost. Now we're found. So now once you are found, what do you do now? What do you do with this information? That's what he said to compel. compel. He said to go out into the hedges and the highways and compel them. Compel them. We're supposed to tell. We're supposed to speak of his goodness. And we're supposed to walk it out. And people are supposed to see a good testimony for Yahweh. And not necessarily just hear, I'm blessed and highly favored. Yes, <laughs> If you're blessed and highly favored, walk it out. I don't want to hear it. I want to see it. Yeah. I don't want to see it. I'm sanctified.
Baptist. I, I don't want to hear it. I want to see it in your walk. Because I don't know about you, but in many places that I have been employed, those were some of the worst people to work with. The ones who claim to be blessed and high faith. And I go to St. So-and-so, so-and-so church. What pastor, reverend, blah, 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 doctor, blah, 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 is my pastor. And you can't hardly work with them. Bad attitude. You don't even know how to greet them in the morning. You don't know if you should greet them in the morning. You might want to stay in your office and not greet them in the morning. But they'll be the ones that will say, why? Because the fruit, the scripture says the fruit didn't fall from, from the tree. The fruit, that you're gonna, whatever that tree is, you can go out there and plant an orange tree and go out there in the spring and think you're going to get apples all you want to. Ola, will you get an apple off that orange tree? No, you won't. Thank you very much. You are confused. Because if you wanted apples, you should have planted apple, an apple tree. But you planted an orange tree, now you're out there looking for apples, wanting to make an apple pie. That's not going to happen. So, here we are. So, here we are. And we see uh, the people who we love have gone on, people who we believe were um, walking according to uh, their the, the scripture. They believe that they were living a holy and righteous life. We all have people who we believe that were just, I mean, they just had the heart after, after Yahweh, after God, they didn't know us by name but at the heart after Yahweh, and then they pass away. And then we come into this, and we say, well, what about them? What about my mama? What about my daddy? Exactly. What about my aunt? I mean, she lived, seen the live holy. I mean, I think she lived the best that she could. Well, the scripture sums it up, and we have to just be set in that. That Father Yahweh is just. And he's the judge. Have mercy. He's the judge. And he says, but he who did not know, yet did what desired flogging, shall be beaten with few. Have mercy. But he's going to be beaten. Why? Because the Torah is true, and the Torah is life, and the Torah is correction. The Torah is a covenant, regardless to what people have to say. Father Yahweh's commandments are true. He said, my word is gone forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish where it has been said. So we know that if you do sin, sin will, is, is you know, your reward, you, something, you got to pay. But it's Father who decides on that judgment. And we don't know what that judgment is. So let's go on to the last great day. Yeshua's fire. We've got four scriptures here. Matthew 3 and 11, and it says, I indeed immerse you in water. This is John, Yochanan, the immerser, who's talking now. He said, I indeed immerse you in water unto repentance. But he, Yeshua, who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to bear. He shall immerse you in the set-apart spirit and fire. Now, what is he saying there? Now, many people, are, you know, you got Christians running around, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost fire. Okay, how do you... How do you feel with both? Because what they don't realize is that it's either or. He came to bring both. He came to, to fill that 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 uh, nefesh with the rock hakodesh, with a set apart spirit. But if you don't accept him, then you get the fire. Pretty much, that's what it is. Bottom line, you get the fire. And the fire is coming. And that's Yeshua's fire. And then in Luke 3 and 16, 
Yochanan answered, saying to them all, I indeed immerse you in water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal straps I am not worthy to loosen. He shall immerse you in the set apart spirit and fire. That's the second witness. Then it goes on to say in Luke 12, 49, I came to send fire on the earth. Now this is Yeshua speaking. And how I wish it were already kindled. I came to bring fire. Many people think, they say, well, Yeshua came and he was a loving God and he was this and he was that and blah, 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 love, love. Oh, huggy, kissy, smooch, 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 smooch. <laughs> and he said, I didn't come to bring peace, I came to bring war. I came to bring division. I came to the sword. I am the sword. Make no mistake about it. He said, I am the sword of the spirit. That's right. I'm the word. Did you not read John 1 and 1? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with y'all. And the word was y'all. And the word became flesh. I am the word. The word is the sword. That's what I'm talking about. He came to bear a sword. And bring division. And that's why we see one or two coming out of a family. Right. Another one coming out of another family. Another one coming out of this family. He is causing the division. He is separating. As I had told you all before when I taught on the threshing floor. He is threshing. We are on the threshing floor. This is the time of the threshing. And his father is separating that wheat. He doesn't have to. He, he doesn't have to do anything. He has set it up in the elements. He said, he told Moshe, he said, tell them, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day if you do not keep my words. So he put it in the elements yeah. to do the separating. Yeah. Right. And when he takes that wheat and throws that wheat up, the threshing floor is in a windy, windy place. Right, right. And it's like that for a purpose. So when he casts the wheat up, the wheat is heavy. It's going to fall back to the floor. But the chain is going to blow off. That's right. The ruach is going to separate it. That's right. That's not mine. And I loved it. I, I just love it when people say, oh, yeah, oh, well, all people are good. Where that come from? Was that man good that shot up all those people? That's what I'm talking about. Shot up the, the senator? Yeah, you might not agree with what they're doing. But to go and take a gun and shoot up people and then end up shooting a little baby nine-year-old girl? And then you... Is that so... Is that good? How could you say that all people are good? I've met some people in my life that I know is not good. That's what I'm talking about. And you can't tell me they're good. They are of the enemy. And then he goes on to say in Acts 2 and 19. And I shall show wonders in the heaven. Above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Yeshua came here the first time to be the sacrifice. He was the sabak. He was the sacrifice. But understand me, and don't get it twisted. He will not be the sacrifice the next time he comes. I know that's right. He will not. He will be using the, and he calls out and he says, the Gentiles, I will make war with the Gentiles. So anyone who calls himself a Gentile, they need to be preparing themselves to be at war with the Almighty. That Yeshua is going to make war with them. He said, I came to bring uh, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. That's Yeshua. That's his fire. Then the last great day, the time of judgment, Matthew 3 and 11, it says, And I indeed immerse you in water unto repentance, but he... Those are the same scriptures. Okay, here it is. Time of judgment. Malachi 4, 1 through 6. 
Can y'all see that going up to read it? Okay, let's read. For look, the day shall come, burning like a furnace, and all the proud and every wrongdoer shall be stubble, and the day that shall come shall burn them up, said Yahweh of hosts, which leads to them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and leap for joy like calves from a stall. And you shall tremble, trample the wrongdoers, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this. That's Father Yahweh's day. That's the Lord's day. That's right. That's not Sunday. That's his day that he's talking about. He said, and you who, the righteous, shall trample the wrongdoers, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this, said Yahweh of hosts. Remember the Torah Moshe. And what did they tell us? Come out of the come out of the Torah. Come out of the come out of the laws of Moses. Come out of the law of Moses. Pre preach grace. We had a preacher tell us preach grace. Preach the grace of Jesus. Okay. But uh Yeshua said that he brings fire, blood, and vapor of smoke. He said, I'm bringing a sword. So this Jesus that they're talking about, you know, literally, there is a spirit of this Jesus person they're talking about, which is not the spirit of the Most High. It is not Yeshua. Yes, and think about uh, Yeshua and Jesus. People forget that it's a deception. Mm -hmm. totally, totally forget deception. Deception. Two different. That's right. That's right. Deception. Exactly. Because the Jesus that the church teaches of is a false doctrine. It's a false doctrine. Because first of all, if Yeshua came, he would celebrate the Sabbath. When he was here, he celebrated the Sabbath. We see him celebrating the feast. And then someone said to me, well, but after Jesus left and it was done away with at the fields, but why did why did the apostles still do it after his death? Why did Paul, Rabbi Paul, said, "Eat the bread." He said, "Keep the feast, keep the feast with unleavened bread." That meant he was saying, "Keep the feast." So the deception is that this Jesus is taking us out of the laws of Moses. And here, Yahweh says in Malachi, after he says all of that, what he says, he says, remember the Torah of Moshe, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb, for all Israel, all, A-L-L, -L, is inclusive of everyone who claims to be Israel. So if the church claims to be Israel, then they are included in the keeping of the commandments and the Torah of Moshe. The Torah, not the Talmud, not the Kabbalah laws, not the Noachid laws, not the laws that, you know, that all the rabbis and everybody has decided we're going to do it this way. No, we're talking about the laws that Father set forth and sent down off Mount Sinai to Moshe. And then he goes on and he says, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. The hearts of the children to their fathers. Lest, see I love the way Father Yahweh does. He gives you the sweetness. And then he comes back and he says, Lest I utterly smite you from the earth and destruction. It's like, okay. <laughs> but 
But he gives us this. He's going to return the hearts of the fathers.